Hey everybody, how's it going? Today we're going to be going over this Apple self-service repair program that many of you are excited about and ask me for an opinion about. It says Apple parts, tools, and manuals starting with the iPhone 12 and 13 will be available to individual consumers. Before I read this article, I think it's important to go over the last time that this happened in the past and just try and make sure that I don't make the same mistake again. I have absolutely no problem giving Apple credit when they do something that is good. And two and a half years ago, I did this video when they released something called the Independent Repair Provider Program. It was a program that was supposed to make parts and manuals and everything available to independent repair shops so that we can do our job. I released a video at the time that says, congratulations Apple for doing a good thing. Apple helps independents buy OEM parts, and the thumbnail of the video had thank you in capital letters. I wanted to give them credit for doing a good thing. Then news about the program actually started to slowly come out, and I discussed it in these three videos I'll link down below. And then in this final video, it was difficult for me to get details in the program because people who signed up for the program had to sign a very restrictive NDA. And it was very difficult to find people that were willing to risk their, uh, their company, their finances, and their legal status just so that some jackass on YouTube could have details on how the program worked. But once I got details on how the program worked, it was very clear that this was a PR stunt designed to just be able to virtue signal to Congress and the Senate that there is no antitrust problem. Look, we make it easy for people to repair their stuff. The reality of the program is quite different than what people thought it was. A, it only made available screens at the time and batteries. So if you have a phone with a bad charge port, sucks to be you. If you have a MacBook with any problem at all, sucks to be you. You have an iMac with any problem, sucks to be you. You have an iPhone where the person on the other end can hear you because your microphone is not working, sucks to be you because you can't buy that with the Apple IRP program. You got iPhone batteries and screens. B, if you wanted to actually get those iPhone batteries and screens, you needed to have the customer's IMEI number and all of that and serial and all that and place an order for it prior to you being able to get the replacement part. So imagine you walk into a store expecting a repair to be five minutes for your battery and they say we actually have to order, we're not allowed to stock the part, we need to get your information from you and then we need to order it and then you can come back a week later. That would virtually kill any shop's chances of actually getting a customer because screen and batteries are expected at this point to be done in 5 to 15 minutes while you wait, even if you go to this shadiest shack in the middle of a mall. If you had parts in your business that you were, quote, not supposed to have, they could look through your business, audit you, and then kick you out of the program. So for instance, in my store, I have chips that I'm not supposed to have. ISL 9240s, where they have an exclusivity agreement with Intersil. CD 3217s, that they have an exclusivity agreement with, with Texas Instruments. These are chips for charging. So if you have a laptop and it stops charging at some point, often these chips can go bad, so that I can fix your laptop charging you less than $1,000 for a new board, I need access to these chips. How I get access to them, <laughs> I can't tell you. But I have these chips in my store. This would be considered, quote, contraband by Apple, meaning that if they were to inspect my business, they would be able to show up there and say, we're kicking you out of this program and we're getting you into trouble because you have something you're not supposed to have. Same is true with schematics, board views, and everything else. And I went over that in detail in this video. It's a 16 minute long video where I spoke with someone who had uh, broken his NDA with Apple to inform me that this program was a PR stunt. This program does not make you a better repair shop. And if you join this program, not only are you missing out on access to lots of things you need to do your job, you're actually going to be restricted from doing your job. So I don't want to make the mistake that I did two and a half years ago, where I said, congratulations, Apple, for doing a good thing with this program. When, when the program came out, it was clear that you're better off not being in this program, and the only reason they appeared to release this program was so that when we talk about right to repair, they could tap a congressperson on the shoulder and say, look, we already do this, don't sign the bill. So that being said, let's read the article. So I just want to, I need to get that out there because I need, the, I need you to understand why I have a healthy skepticism at this point. Again, I'm happy to give Apple credit when they do something good, but the problem is when I'm premature in that announcement, when I announce this before the program details actually show up and are made released, I look like an idiot. And any of you who called me an idiot in the comment section of that video, you were 100% correct and I was wrong. So let's read this announcement and then give you my thoughts. Apple parts, tools, and manuals, starting with the iPhone 12 and 13, available to individual consumers. 
Apple today announced self-service repair, which will allow customers who are comfortable with completing their own repairs access to Apple Genuine Parts and Tools. Available first for the iPhone 12 and 13 lineups, and soon to be followed by Mac computers featuring M1 chips, self-service repair will be available early next year in the U.S. and expand to additional countries throughout 2022. Customers join more than 5,000 Apple-authorized service providers and 2,800 independent repair providers who have access to these parts, tools, and manuals. The initial phase of the program will focus on the most commonly serviced modules, such as the iPhone display, battery, and camera. The ability for additional repairs will be available later next year. So the first thing to understand here, again, display, battery, and camera. Great, but I, again, I, I know I'm being a stickler here, but char charge ports do break as well. We have lots of people showing up for that. And again, like the, it's difficult for me to get excited about a program when, again, maybe it will include charge ports, but in here it says it doesn't, and the old one still doesn't. This this breaks. This is a common thing that breaks on a phone. This by itself, again, I know someone's going to say this says this nitpicking, blah, blah, blah. If I say I repair the MacBook and you come in with a MacBook that does not charge and I say, I'm sorry, I don't replace this charge port because uh, I'm not going to replace your charge port. The customer is going to look at me like I'm a dragon, walk out, leave a one star review of my business and never show up there again. It's something, so this is the stuff that goes through my head when I read this. Creating greater access to Apple Genuine Parts gives our customers even more choice for repairs needed, said Jeff Williams, Apple's chief operating officer. In the past three years, Apple has nearly doubled the number of service locations with access to Apple Genuine Parts, tools, and training, and now are providing an option for those who wish to complete their own repairs. Apple builds durable products designed to afford them, sorry enforce the rigors of everyday use. When an Apple product requires repair, it can be serviced by trained technicians using Apple Genuine Parts at thousands of locations, including Apple, in-store by mail, AASPs, independent repair providers, and now product owners who are capable of performing repairs themselves. To ensure a customer can safely perform a repair, it's important they first review the repair manual. Okay, that's cool, they're giving a manual out. Then a customer will be able to place an order for an Apple Genuine Part and Tool using the Apple Self-Service Repair Online Store. Following the repair, customers who return their used part for recycling will receive credit toward their purchase. The new store will offer more than 200 individual parts and tools, enabling customers to complete the most common repairs on iPhone 12 and 13. Self-Service Repair is intended for individual technicians with the knowledge and experience to repair electronic devices. For the vast majority of customers, visiting a professional repair provider with certified technicians who use genuine Apple parts is the safest and most reliable way to get a repair. Expanded access to Apple repairs. In the past three years, Apple has nearly doubled the number of service locations. Okay, that, that, that's just PR wank that they are pretty much already put there. The rapidly expanding IRP program, originally launched in 2019, has since grown to more than 200 countries, enabling independent repair shops access to the same training parts and tools as other author, Apple authorized service partners. Again, you, you, you know what I think of that if you've watched this video. I don't think that's a particularly good program. I have not joined it because I actually do need to be able to perform repairs for customers that that program would not allow me to do. In addition, Apple continues to offer convenient repair options for customers through its global network of 5,000 AASPs that help millions of people deal with both in and out of warranty service products. But designing products for durability, longevity, and increased repairability, customers enjoy a long-lasting product that holds its value for years. Apple also offers years of service of software upgrades to introduce new features and functionality. Now, this PR is really devoid of information. What I, the only thing that I really get from this is, A, they're not going to have parts for the MacBook available until the end of next year. I really does make me wonder why does it take a year to get that done and b when it comes to the device that they are going to make parts available to the iphone they leave out a lot of the basics again like a charge port an earpiece stuff like that again maybe they're maybe they don't plan to leave that out maybe they just left it out in the pr but the reason i'm concerned is again this program that i praised like an idiot two and a half years ago did not give you access to some of the most basic elements necessary to be able to repair the basic things that die on your phone the next question that i would have Let's say that they're actually going to make parts available. Let's say that this program is not a total meme like the IRP program. The details that I would be curious about is what degree, how granular are you going to make parts available? So what makes us a viable option over going to the Apple Store is that we will replace just what's broken, not everything. Let me give you a couple of examples of that. Let's say you come to a store, our store years ago and you had a broken screen. If you look online for, let's say, the 2141 MacBook, it's very difficult, if not close to impossible, to get access to the LCD cell by itself. The LCD cell by itself is this thing over here. So this is a video on how to replace a, a MacBook Air screen. I don't have one for the newer models because I can't even find the screen by itself. So you have the entire display assembly, which I will show over here. Uh, 
this is going to be the part that has the uh, Apple logo on it and all that stuff. So this entire thing, I'm just going to Google image search it. See this? This is the part that has the hinges, the little bezel that says MacBook Air on it or MacBook Pro. It has the Apple logo on the back and the metal. That's the entire display assembly, and that's quite expensive. And then you have this. This is the part that actually makes the picture just the front part, not the backlight layers, not the hinge, not everything else. And there's a considerable price difference in buying these things. At the time that I made this video, you could buy this part for $72. Yet the screen assembly costs $450. Or with some of the newer machines, like the 16-inch, uh, I believe, look at this, $850 for an eBay screen. $750 for an eBay screen, $855, $795. It's quite expensive to replace this entire thing, and it often makes it a not economically viable repair. If you are able to buy the actual part that is broken, the only thing that's broken, so that you could actually do a repair rather than replace the whole thing, like the LCD cell by itself like this for $75 to $125, now you have an economically viable repair. Again, we're not replacing the entire top of the laptop, we're just replacing what's broken. Another example would be with keyboards. So when you go to the Apple Store or an Apple Authorized Repair Center, they do not offer keyboard replacements. What they do is they replace the entire top case. This is a top case. The top case, it comes with the trackpad, which may not be broken in your case. The battery, which may not be broken in your case. It comes with the, you know, all this stuff up here, microphones, speakers, all of this stuff over here is what Apple will replace in your device if you have a problem with your keyboard, which is again, in this case, $321 instead of replacing the keyboard. Here, the keyboard is $47.99. Now this is again, a more difficult repair, but for a little bit more difficulty, you save almost 300 bucks, which is worth it. Now, I could go on and on and on with this, but the thing that I'm really curious about with these programs are, are they going to be making parts available that actually make it economically viable to do repair, or are they only going to be making parts available to do it, quote, the Apple way, where you replace everything? And a user is usually not interested in replacing their entire screen assembly for $800 plus when what they actually need is the screen and the screen is 75 to 125 bucks. They're not always interested in replacing the entire top case when all they need is a keyboard or a trackpad. Again, why pay 350 or 450 or 500 for a top case when all you need is a $30 trackpad? Whether or not this is a good program or a giant pile of crap is really going to depend on whether or not this program actually makes available the parts that you need to be able to repair your device individually or whether you have to buy them as a kit. Again, are you going to make the battery available by itself or are you going to require that we buy an entire top case to replace the battery? This is this is going to be what would I think really matters to end consumers. It's not just giving them the headline that, look, we made parts available. Because again, if all you're doing is making this available, this is not really helpful. Again, you know, if, if I tell, a, if you tell someone it's going to cost over a thousand dollars to replace their screen, that's not something that they're going to be particularly excited about. That's going to be where they say, screw it. I may deal with it as is use an external monitor or just toss it and buy a used one on eBay for a thousand bucks because that's not worth it. But if you're able to actually tell someone, hey, look, you can buy the LCD cell part by itself, then it'll be made useful. And again, these are parts that I used to be able to buy that I'm not really able to buy anymore. It used to come in packaging like this for new machines. Good luck finding any of this at any sort of reasonable price. But you, you used to be able to buy stuff like this for, you know, 75 to 90 bucks a piece. And that actually made it sensible for you to repair your device. But what's been going on as time goes on is instead of replacing a keyboard, we've been conditioned to replace a top case. Instead of replacing an LCD cell by itself, we are conditioned to replace an entire display assembly. So this would technically give Apple the headline that look, we are making parts available, we're being green, we're being sustainable, when in reality, it's you're, you're replacing a lot of stuff that you don't need to replace, and the price points that they may make it available at may make it so that it's not economically viable. Now again, I could be wrong. Maybe they make everything available. Maybe they make all of the stuff available and they make it available at prices where it actually makes sense for you to fix your computer rather than purchase a new one. Maybe this is not just virtue signaling for Congress and the Senate and regulatory bodies in the FTC so that they just go away just in time for them to toss this program in the garbage. But you have to understand where my cynicism is coming from. I've been down this road before. I said thank you, Apple, for releasing this program that lets us buy parts, and then it wound up being a complete screw job by Apple. So I have 
trust issues there. Now, at the end of the day, uh, this isn't even just so much about what makes sense for repair shops. It's also about what makes sense uh, for end consumers. End consumers may think a repair is worthwhile if they're buying a $75 screen. They may not think it's worthwhile if they're buying a $800 a display assembly when what they need is the $75 screen. I'm, these are the things that I've recognized matter to end consumers. Uh, you know, you, you can't tell somebody, well, it's going to be so expensive because I have to replace all this because the first thing they're going to say is, why can't you just replace my keyboard? And if you are working at Apple and you do watch this channel and you do actually value repair and you actually get this to be a program that is useful, I will give you credit. I will give your company credit. I will happily swallow every single thing I've said against Apple over the past 12 years if you just do this one thing right. I am not opposed to letting bygones be bygones, starting from scratch, and having a happy, productive, positive relationship with the people that work at Apple Inc., saying nice things about them, supporting what they do, supporting the fact that they support repair. I am happy to let bygones be bygones and start from scratch. I just need one small olive branch. Make this a program that is not a meme. That's all I ask. That's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.